review coming up here on uh, it's me, Tom coming from you in Summer and Devon, and uh, we got a very strange review today actually, because uh, I don't think I don't know if there are any others on uh, YouTube, um, but I haven't really looked very thoroughly. Today we are looking at a Backman, and uh, you can see it's limited edition because of the fantastic looking box. A Backman limited edition Ravningham Hall. Now I am aware that they have just retooled all of the halls, and I was going to buy what was it, four mark, one of the BR black ones, because that's another preserved one. Um, it's just gone out of traffic actually at the crosswalks. Um, but I saw this one on eBay, and it had never been run. I think um, it had barely even been out of his box really, and um, I thought, well, I've got to have that really because. Ravningham is, is my favourite hall, really. I mean, it's it's at the railway I work at right now, and um, it's just a fantastic engine. I mean, I was going to get one of the new Hornby Unmodified, but they were railroad and the paint finishes weren't very good, blah, blah, blah. So I thought, you know, there weren't any preserved ones, really. So, um, apart from Reed Ashton, which Pacman have already done. Um, so I, I went for this one, and I am quite glad I took the plunge, but it is quite old. It's not terribly strong. But it's a really nice model, and they only bring it out every now and then because it's special and collectors. Now, before I open the box, I'm going to go through all the boring stuff. Um, I know you'll all be moaning at me. <laughs> right. Instructions and stuff. Good. So, we have... Sorry, not no tripod today. I've left it somewhere. But we got... Let's see, 460. Built by the Great Western in the 30s. It's a modified which were just a bit better to get away mixed traffic. And the model is in the livery that the engine is in now. I think it's just pre-nationalisation Great Western. So yes, modified hall, loco code, with a slack. That's another limited edition one. That one's got quite a lot of mere, raised breed, blah, raffling here. So yeah, it's all the standard goes together normally, obviously. And then we've got... Anything else in there? Probably be the warranty, I think. Yeah, guarantee obviously doesn't apply. <laughs> Thankfully, hasn't had to be uh, filled out. Sorry, trying to do this one hand this today. Uh, yeah, guarantee card, care of your locomotive, proper lubrication, etc. etc. Um, it is quite, it doesn't, I don't like to push it on second radius or anything. It won't actually go over the points very well. It has to go around gentle curves, so I just leave it on third radius when I do run it. So, um, I yeah, bought quite a few things on eBay this year. And then we have the certificate. Here we go. This is to certify that this is one of 2,000 pieces specially produced by Beckman Industries, number 906. And it says at the top, 9 carat gold. Now, I'm presuming it says 9 carat gold because there are these etched nameplates on the back. And it looks like, oh, what, there we go, <laughs> it looks like they're 9 karat gold. Now, I could take them off and put them on because it's just printed at the moment on the engine. But I thought, since it's more of a collector's thing, I think I'll leave it in there. So, I'm going to leave that in there for the moment, plus I'm not really sure I want to touch it that much. So, yes, number 906. Um, and, yes, so, oh, oh, yes, yes, that's it, right, sorry. Um, <laughs> so, yes, let's uh, get her open. Bit of a miserable day today, so it has to be known. Miserable day, play trains. Right. <laughs> so, first of all, we get these brake rods with it, which I haven't put on yet. And uh, another vac. Oh, yeah, there's this vacuum pack. I presume it's for the tender because there's already one on the front, but I couldn't quite get it to fit. I have to have another look at the instructions later and see if I can get that on. And you also get a crew, which I have super glued. <laughs> in, in the cab. So, uh, yes, it is. I wish I'd actually um, hadn't done that before I did the video, but it'll look better in running sessions and things. So yes, this is a tender. Um, it will clunk a bit because it's got uh, a couple of weights in it. That because me and my friend Matt had a few problems with this when we took it to the railway. So uh, thanks to him for doing that and a couple of other things, which I'll show you in a minute. So yes, I think this is the late Great Western crest, just before the war. Um, pretty sure I read that somewhere. I think the castles had it as well, but not with the orange lining. This is obviously the collet tender. Um, they did come. They did get the hawks with ones as well later on, and it's just got this hook on it. And it's got a very odd coupling, because um, it's got this thick bit on the end, and the wider bit. And then on the other side, which is handy because it doesn't flick down all the time, it's got this little spring. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Oh, focus it. There we go, just a little spring. It's quite odd. 
But anyway, quite a nice tender. No sprung buffers or anything, because it's quite basic. Um, so yeah, let's just uh, put the loading out. camera down a second. There we go. Not terribly easy to bring out, and the body is a bit loose at the moment because of a problem we've had. So yeah, so I've put the crew in there. As you can see, sorry the light's quite bad today. Um, now, what's a slight problem? The fireman is so tall that his head is actually pretty much touching the roof. And then the driver is sitting down. Now, the halls don't really have seats. They just sort of had a small wooden plank that can fold down. So I had to sort of put him in the corner like that. But it um, looks like he's touching either the reverse or he's just shut off the regulator because they're coasting or something. So, um, yes. The detail is fairly basic. You get some nice lamp hooks and things, but the problem is that they tend to tear the foam off in the in the box. Um, wow, the light is really bad. <laughs> um, if I just uh, stop this for a second, then I'll see if I can turn on some more lights. Get some light in here. Right, so there we go. That's a little bit better. Um, so yes, yeah, so I bought this off eBay for about 120, I think it was. Um, I've seen it on there before. It's been on there quite a while. But it's because everybody, and I mean everybody, spells it wrong. Or they say it wrong. Like, I've seen videos where people have called it Ravningham Hall, and it's not Ravningham. And I've also seen where most people seem to just, they miss out the E, and that N, E in the N, and they just call it Ravingham, and they've they done the same with this model. And um, I just find it a little bit odd, because <laughs> it clearly says it on there. But um, yeah, it wasn't too bad a deal. Um, but as you can see, it's little... Maybe that's just gold to the plate. 906, it says on there, because... There we go. Um, so yes, I did have a bit of a problem. When I got it out, and I ran it in, I noticed that these back and bottom two wheels were sort of angled slightly. And um, it was starting to bend a rod... Um, so I took it to Rowan and um, my friend Matt, huge thanks to him by the way, got a special mention in this video again, um, and he managed to just loosen the body screw a bit and um, uh, it was so sort of, we thought it was coming off the axle and um, yeah it's it's pretty good now actually. Um, also there's a little speedo detail there but like on Hogwarts Castle it's not connected to anything. Um, and uh, yeah it's, uh, it's a nice model, the orange lining is really nice. Um, I don't know why the camera keeps going all blue and fuzzy. I think it's because of the box. Put the box out of the way. It's a really nice box, by the way. I was not expecting that. It's really nice. They tend to do it a lot with the special ones. Okay. Um, yes, it's just a really nice model. And uh, Ravenham doesn't actually have its speedo equipment on at the moment. I'm not really sure why. But it's uh, owned by Jeremy thingy, Hosk Hoskins, Hosking, whatever, he owns quite a few locals, you know, Nunny Castle, Braunton, Bitten, and all that, so, uh, yes, it's quite nice, really, it's sort of all the, I think the lining's a little bright, um, not quite that bright on the real thing, but it, it, it is a really nice end, you, you, you just have to see it in real life, well, I can, I can show you a picture, actually, I'll show you a quick picture of the engine on my phone, very nice engine. See it a lot now because we're getting a lot less a lot of engines getting withdrawn up there, so it uh, seems to get used a little bit more. That's a good one. Very nice engine. Yes. Right. Um, so, uh, yes, modified hull, they're mixed traffic. Um, they did have one small problem, which is that it was two cylinder and they tend to droop out a bit. And uh, this caused two problems. One, when you're going really fast, it tends to sort of pivot like that. Like a lot of big, bigger freight tanks tend to do that. And um, also, it, it's fine for the platforms sort of down here, where they used to be designed for broad gauge and things. But up country, it's a little bit harder. Um, I think they were slightly narrower on these, but on the unmodified, it was more of a problem, really. And um, to be honest, I think that's all I need to say about the Loco, really. Um, everything's there that needs to be there, really. I was going to put some lamps on it, but I thought it won't fit in the box. Like the 9F here that I did a few a week or so ago, I've now put some footsteps on it, and it won't fit in its box now. <laughs> so I have to put it in with all the coaches when I'm going to the railway or so. Right. So, before I run this, I thought, since I don't have any great Western stock, I'll just run it with Western Mark 1s, which I've got a few of, but not very many, since that's what it pulls at the moment, because that's the livery it's in. Um, but also, I thought, well, they're mixed traffic, so I'll get some great Western-themed freight. Now, as you can see, I've already got some over there. But I bought a couple more at the weekend. Now, uh, this isn't necessarily great Western, but the other one is. 
So I bought this very nice uh, Daffol wagon, Hartman Sons, Horse and British Lady. It was uh, obviously bought it all at the shop where I work because it's uh, one of those locally commissioned ones. And then I also bought this Great Western Avonmouth van, which is very nice and I thought would fit in very nicely. So we could have a brake van at each end, like. Um, so I'll just whip these out quickly. So yeah, so you got this. It's a pretty good price, really. I mean, it's a bit cheaper for me, obviously, but about fifteen pounds is quite good for a little limited edition one. And they do a lot of these uh, duffels. So focus. Okay. Established at St Augustine Street, Taunton. Competing with Goodlands. I think there was another one for Goodlands. Nineteen thirty-eight. Branch to sixty-one. They started in the nineteen thirties in Great Western days. So. Uh, this is number 6207, commissioned by Burnham Model Railway Club. So it's, it's quite a nice little wagon, actually. Isn't it? Sorry, this I know this isn't a wagon review. I'm very sorry. I'm trying to make it quick. Uh, let's get all the packaging out of the way. I just need to build up a few more, really. I've got quite an odd array of wagons so far. So uh, this is it. Just a nice little private wagon with the coal load in it, um, with the slimmer line couplings. <laughs> Slim airline. That's a new word there. <laughs> right, and then the other one is Avonmouth, which is on the Seven Beach line. Uh, wipe this one out. This one was a little more expensive, but it is a premium Hornby one. Fair enough, really. Um, does pretty much just look like it's just come out of the factory. The finish on it is fantastic, and so is the detail. And I should expect to have what I paid for it. <laughs> um, so yes, I've got these few wagons, so I'll just uh, set up a freight train. And uh, actually, no, I won't. I'll run the loco round first, and then we'll set up a freight train. So uh, yes, I'll see you in a mo. Right, I'm back. Sorry about all the mess. I've been doing some ballasting, as you can see. Um, and uh, yes, loco is on, freight train is assembled, and one more thing I like to say about the freight train is actually, I do like to keep it local, like Avonmouth's only a couple of counties away, and um, you know, Newton Abbott and Bishop's and all that, and I am aware that, because um, of course staff will make a lot of local wagons even for Devon and Somerset, and um, I am aware that Hornby actually make an Exeter private wagon, so I'll try and pick that up as soon as I can. And, uh, yeah, I do like private wagons like Hensworth and J.R. Davies and things. And just and A lot of them are quite colourful and I find them quite nice. But anyway, the loco is on. So, oh, God, that's dark. <laughs> Sorry, I planned out this very well, have I? Um, right, let's add some power. was a little bit reluctant to move when I first got it, but that's just because it's a bit old. Could do with a bit of lubrication, I suppose, soon. Pretty simple to take apart, really. It runs fairly well, but it is quite old. Yeah, I'm really sorry about the light. I can always redo bits of this video again if any of you want me to. So, uh, yes. And we have got some pretty exciting videos coming up, actually. We've got um, a mega steam one coming up, but I'm not going to tell you what that is. And I've also got some running sessions planned. Uh, that was actually planned for quite a few weeks ago, but I got so behind on doing these reviews, getting these locos ready, that I just haven't had time. So yes, it's it's fairly smooth actually. It's uh, it it doesn't like to pull a lot of coaches. It tends to struggle with the, your normal Hornby Mark ones really. So um, I tend to put it with a bit more freight. But uh, I'll just uh, hitch up the freight train and uh, back in a second. Right, I'm back. It's quite handy with uh, the fact that this freight van is the older style coupling because it goes behind that quite well. So, uh, yeah, sorry if the angles are a bit shaky, but like I said, I've left the tripod somewhere today. I have no idea where it is. Um, probably it. Where the door or something. Right, so, yeah, sorry if the angles are a little shaky.
Yes, I've just got one more signal to install and then I can really scene out the layout. I might also do a little bit of uh, lighting because it's fairly simple really. You just buy all the bulbs and then black out the, uh, the buildings and it's uh, quite simple. So yeah, it's got a nice little Great Western themed. Obviously I've got quite a lot more wagons, but I tend to put those with the 9F because this looks quite good with the collet goods that's uh, hiding in there. Um, so yes, that's, uh, that's the Backham and Ravningham Hall. I can recommend it, but you'd have to find one to get it. So... Um, it's it's just the same as all the other ones really, except it's in a different livery. They are really good. They're really smooth, despite not being very strong. Um, also, if you remember that 4MTE I did quite a while ago, which is about the same age, I've just about given up on that engine because it's so rough. It runs so badly. I just I almost can't be bothered with it anymore. So if I'm I'm going to attempt to do a couple more things to it, and if that doesn't remedy it, then I might just whack it back on eBay as slightly used. No, not really, very used. I mean, I had no idea about it. I could have bought a newer one, but I just didn't have the money at the time. So, uh, yes, hope you've enjoyed this one, and uh, sorry for the lack of steam tour videos, but as you may have heard a couple of days ago, there's the Union of South Africa failing and everything going to Buckfastly. I was actually in Taunton at the time. Um, so I didn't get a chance to see it because I was working in the day. Um, but yeah, it didn't go well with that. It's a shame. It's a great loco. It is known for going well. So, uh, yes, I think there's Tanya possibly on Sunday, so I might pop out and film that for you. Um, so yes, thanks for watching everybody. And, uh, yeah, this is me signing out. And, uh, look out for some more videos soon. I don't really have any more reviews to do yet, unless I buy any more. Obviously got Flying Scotsman Part 2 to do. I think you can possibly expect that in the next oh, two or three months. Me and James might be able to do that one. Um, so yeah. Basically, sum up, bit behind schedule, great, lo great new locos and wagons. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching everybody, and uh, hope you enjoyed the show. Ha <laughs> ha!